Greetings, fellow scribes. Welcome back to the archive. This week, I continue my series on the realms of Pugmire by talking about the mechanical side of the Monarchies of Mao. Now, let's start off with this. They both use the same basic system, so the core mechanics aren't changing. I am mostly going to be talking about character creation in this video, and the classes, the houses, etc. So sit back, relax, and enjoy as we talk about how you build an excellent cat. Something I neglected to mention in Pugmire, I'm going to rectify here, is Monarchies of Mao uses the, uh, the array for ability scores, i.e. every character has base a 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, and 8 in one of their ability scores. There's no rolling for it. Everyone's kind of starting from the same basic area. And then, of course, you get extra ability scores based on you know, a bonus to your ability scores based on your house. And that's what I'm going to start talking about. There are a number of specific houses for, you know, for the monarchies of Mao. Each of these at one time was its own monarchy, and they still retain their own overarching cultures within the blanket monarchies of Mao, but they're all kind of officially rated to be working together. Each house, though, has its own sort of specialty. House Angora, they get a bonus to their Intelligence, plus two their intelligence, and vora the voracious learner, uh, secret. Because they're called secrets for cats, tricks for dogs. And Angora are scholars and intellectuals. They seek out new information, new knowledge to hoard. How Simric are the diplomats and negotiators. They get a bonus to charisma and they get the secret of immaculate grooming. House Korat are the soldiers and tacticians. They get a plus two to strength and the uh, Brute Strength secret. House Mao, the leaders of the monarchies of Mao, the, and of course the judges, get a plus two to Wisdom, and the Keen Observer secret. House Rex are the Explorers and Outsiders. They're, they're sort of the wandering house that lives out in the woods. They get a plus two to dexterity and the perfect balance secret. House Siberian, um, they're medics, but they're also traditionalists. They're the house that values the status quo and keeping things the way they used to be. They advocate for a, uh, a regimented approach to change. They get a plus two to charisma, a constitution, and the hardy constitution secret. And then, finally, you have what's called the shadow block. 
these are cats who either belong to the host of minor houses or don't swear allegiance to a house at all. They get plus one to any two ability scores. And they get to pick one of any of the other houses starting secrets. Now, any cat, regardless of house, can take the cat of the world um, trait and secret. Because there are, there's a upbringing secret with every house. Cat of the World is a more generic one. It's any cat can have it. Um, never, you know, these are the cats who never knew the support of the nobles of their house. And basically, he can. The Cat of the World knows people in the rank and file of everything and can kind of ask for help from them. If a player spends fortune, then he can basically go a previously unknown NPC is an old friend and on good terms with them. But it's from the, you know, rank and file. Like, you know, he might be friends with the bartender, or the various guards around the city, or such, but not like the upper ranks. Alternately, each house has a house upbringing secret, which it basically means if you encounter a previously unknown member of your house, you can spend a fortune and go, Oh, this is an old friend. I've known him for years. And and they're on good standing with you. <clears throat> and that that's basically representing the fact that the monarchies have a very regimented structure in a way compared to the dogs. Ironically. Now... One thing to remember is, for the dogs, the breeds matter. For the cats, the house matters. And, you know, the basically there's not really much difference between the breeds of cats as there is with dogs. But, like... You know, you might expect a, say, a um, Maine Coon to be more likely to be found in House Korat, while a Sphinx might be more likely to be found in House Agora or House Simric. Now, of course, <clears throat> we get into the colonies. And as with Pugmire, each of the callings is kind of an analog for one of the classic D&D classes. Champions are the analog for the fighter. You know, they get a D10 hit die. Charisma and strength are their primary abilities. And, you know, they start off with a whole bunch of weapon skills. And then they can choose a, a fighting style or barbed heckle as their starting talent. A starting, starting secret. Foot pads are the rogue analog. You know, D8 hit... D8 hit stamina dice, 
dexterity and intelligence are their primary skill uh, attributes and they can either take expertise or precise attack as their uh, starting secret. Mansers are the wizard analogs. And it's kind of funny. Mansers don't have to take the ability to cast spells, but if you're playing a Mancer, why wouldn't you? Um, they either get good memory or Mancy for their starting choice, their starting secret. And of course, they have a D6 stamina die with intelligence and wisdom being their primary ability scores. Now, what's different between Mancers and the Pug's Artificers is Mancers have a talisman made out of bone. It's not some relic of humanity or humankind or anything like that. It's an actual bone item that they use for their spellcasting focus. Everything else is kind of the same. But, like I said, they're... They're the literally more arcane ma magic users. Like, they're literally doing magic the way we think of magic. Not... Oh yeah, it's vaguely viewed as some form of technology. No, no, they're they're outright. It's magic. Ministers are the cleric equivalent, though they're a little bit different. They only have light armor as opposed to clerics' reputation of being heavy armor and shields. They're. D6 stamina, you know, D6 stamina die, 6 stamina per level, with charisma and constitution as their abilities. And they, of course, get either invigoration or Given the voice for their starting secrets. Given the voice is divine spell casting. And it's based off their charisma, not their wisdom, ironically. But, yeah, they, they do their spell casting through their voice. So, they're actually sort of a combination of bard and priest. Because, remember, for the cats, their spiritual paths are personal. And ministers are basically there to answer questions. And help a cat move along their own path. Not going, this is the way. But... Well, here's how you find your way type approach. Next, of course, we have the trackers. They are the ranger analogs. D10 stamina die, constitution and wisdom as their primary attributes, and then they get... Uh, either smite or weapon to paw as their starting uh, as their starting secrets. Weapon to paw is essentially quick draw. It's a little bit different, but it's pretty much the same thing. And then finally, you have wanderers. Now, wanderers are kind of interesting in how they fit. So, the equivalent for to wanderers among the dogs is strays. 
and strays are a barbarian equivalent. Wanderers, however, are more of a monk equivalent. You know, they have a D8 uh, stamina die. Dexterity and strength are their primary ability scores. And while they ha know how to wear light armor and know how to use all martial and simple weapons, they can take either martial arts or unarmored defense. And th to me, this makes them more of a, as I said, a monk analog than a anything else. And that overall is the choices you get to make as you are building your excellent cat. If you take one of the spell casting ones, you've got three, well, cantrips, and then two first level spells from your from the appropriate list, whether it be Minister or Mancer. And you know that that's the core of it. So with that said, next week I'm going to continue the series with talking about the Pirates of Pugmire. The cats, dogs, birds, turtles that ply the acid sea. So until then, I'd like you all to remember to have fun and keep gaming.